Hello everyone and welcome to another video on the balance of payments. This time we'll be discussing causes of current account imbalances. So on this slide we've got key causes of a current account deficit. Although do remember that an imbalance can be a surplus as well. So first key cause on this slide, poor price and non-price competitiveness. So this might be because a country has a higher inflation rate than its trading partners, um, perhaps low levels of research and development and investment, and perhaps weaknesses in design, performance or branding. If a country's exchange rate is too strong, then that's going to affect the demand for exports and imports. It will mean that exports are more expensive in foreign currency and imports cheaper in domestic currency. It's possible as well that um, there might be a recession in one or more other countries' major trading partners. And it might be quite difficult. There might be barriers to switching to other markets, especially if there is no history of doing trade there. And for a number of countries, particularly those selling primary commodities, um, volatile global prices can present problems. Right, thinking task for you. In the case of the UK, which of the factors previously mentioned do you think provide the best explanation? Maybe compare your thoughts to your classmates and ask your teacher if you are thinking along the right lines. On this slide, we've got the consequences of a current account deficit. If we're going to be thinking about policies to correct imbalances, then it's really important that we understand why they're happening and the extent to which they matter. So if a country is running a large current account deficit, then there's going to be a loss of aggregate demand. Remember, there is an outflow from the circular flow. It is possible, depending on what else is happening, that a large current account deficit will mean the currency of that country depreciates. And there is a risk then of higher cost push inflation. Um, it's possible as well that higher inflation and currency weakness may mean that a country runs short of vital foreign exchange reserves. Um, it's possible too that a trade deficit may be a reflection of a lack of competitiveness and indicate significant supply side weakness in an economy. Um, some countries running current account deficits may choose to borrow in order to achieve the necessary financial account surplus. And this can be a risky course of action in some cases. And ultimately, an unsustainable current account deficit can lead to loss of investor confidence. Um, meaning that there can be capital flight and a currency or balance of payments crisis. Um, another thing to consider is the export multiplier effect. So a fall in exports won't just reduce AD once, but the final impact on GDP, jobs, investment and so on is amplified, multiplied by multiplier and accelerator effects. Let's just have a look at this then. So many industries rely heavily on key export industries remaining competitive. 
So these include industries such as transport, freight, logistics, uh, trade finance businesses, insurance, trade credit, and all the service businesses that operate in ports and airports. It is very, very likely that a fall in exports will ripple out through the whole economy, having a much bigger overall impact on GDP, jobs and investment. Um, and exports can be particularly important for regional economic performance. And certainly in the case of the UK, the UK is a country with big regional imbalances. So let's look at the other side of this now. What sorts of things cause a current account surplus? Well, first of all, fairly evidently, there must be a large positive gap between exports and imports, um, especially when primary and secondary balances are small. Um, there can be a large and persistent surplus of savings over investment for household firms and governments. So in these countries, consumption could be quite a lot higher and this would help to rebalance trade. Um, it may be that an export surplus is a result of very high prices for exports of commodities such as oil and gas, so PED would need to be low for this to be the outcome. And the surplus isn't necessarily the result of a country achieving a high level of competitiveness. So which of the following statements here are true or False. Pause the video for a couple of minutes and have a read and have a think. Right, welcome back everybody. Let's have a look at the answers I have got. True, 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 and you've probably guessed it. True here as well. All of these statements about a current account surplus are true. So let's quickly now look at evaluating current account surpluses and deficits. So trade imbalances, as we've seen, have become very much a key feature of the world economy. And they're neither good nor bad in themselves. We need to look at how a deficit and surplus are used. So on the plus side, a country running a significant surplus, if they're using that to fund foreign direct investment into other countries such as Sub-Saharan Africa, then depending on how it's done, that can bring significant benefits. But on the other side of the argument, persistent surpluses can lead to rising protectionist sentiment, as we've seen between the US and China. Thinking task for you now, can you think of any other examples or arguments to add in here? Pause the video for a couple of minutes and check any thoughts you've come up with with your teacher to make sure you're alive the right lines. There we are, that's an end to this video on the consequences of current account imbalances.